Hey everyone! So I have a great folk tale for you today. It's called Anansi and the Moss Covered Rock, retold by Eric A. Kimmel, illustrated by Janet Stevens. Hmm. Curious. Anansi and the Moss Covered Rock. To Johnny. Once upon a time, Anansi the spider was walking, walking, walking through the forest when something caught his eye. It was a strange moss-covered rock. How interesting, said Anansi. Isn't this a strange moss-covered rock? Kabow! Everything went black. Down fell Anansi, senseless. About an hour later, Anansi woke up and his head was spinning. He wondered what had happened. I was walking along the path when something caught my eye. I stopped and I said, isn't this a strange moss-covered rock? Kapow! Down fell Anansi again, but this time, when he woke up an hour later, he knew what was happening. Ha ha, said Anansi. This is a magic rock. And whenever anyone comes along and says the magic words, isn't this a strange mm -hmm, down he goes. This is a good thing to know, said Anansi. And I know just how to use it. So... Anansi went walking, walking, walking through the forest until he came to Lion's house. Lion was sitting up on the porch and his feet, um, or at his feet, were a great big pile of yams. Anansi loved yams, but he was too lazy to dig them up for himself. So Anansi said to Lion, Hello, Lion! It's very hot today. Don't you think so? Yeah, yeah, Anansi said Lion. It's terribly hot. Well, I'm going for a walk in the cool forest, said Anansi. Would you like to come? I, I certainly would, said Lion. And so Lion and Anansi went walking, walking, walking through the forest and after a while, Anansi led Lion to a certain place. Lion, do you see what I see? Yeah, said Anansi. Or, yes, Anansi, said Lion. Isn't this a strange moss-covered rock? <laughs> Kapow! Down Lion fell, and Anansi ran back to Lion's house and made off with lion's yams. About an hour later, lion woke up and his head was spinning. Anansi was nowhere in sight, and when he got home, he found every single one of his yams were gone. Lion was very sad. But Anansi was very happy and he couldn't wait to play his trick again. One more time, Anansi went walking, walking, walking through the forest, and this time he stopped at Elephant's house. Elephant was sitting up on his porch. At Elephant's feet was a great pile of bananas. Anansi loved bananas, but he was too lazy to pick them for himself. So he said to Elephant, Hello, Elephant! Isn't it a hot day today? Oh, it is. It is, Elephant agreed. I'm going to go for a walk in the cool forest, Anansi said. Would you like to come? Yeah, that sounds nice, said Elephant. Thank you for inviting me, Anansi. So Anansi the Elephant went walking. I should say Anansi and the elephant went walking, walking, walking through the forest. And after a while, Anansi led Elephant to a certain place. Elephant, look, 
Do you see what I see? Elephant looked. Yes, I do, Anansi. Isn't this a strange moss-covered rock? Kabom! Down fell Elephant, and Anansi ran off <laughs> to Elephant's house and made off with all the bananas. About an hour later, Elephant woke up. His head was spinning, and Anansi was nowhere in sight. When he got home, he found every single one of his bananas was gone. Elephant was very sad. But Anansi was very happy, and he couldn't wait to play his trick again. He played it on rhinoceros mm -hmm. and hippopotamus. Mm -hmm. He played it on giraffe. Mm -hmm. And Zebra, he played his trick on every single animal in the forest. But all this time, watching from behind the leaves was a little bush deer. A little bush deer was very small and shy and very hard to see. And she watched Anansi play his wicked trick again and again on all the other animals. And Little Bush Deer decided it was time for Anansi to learn a lesson. So Little Bush Deer went deep into the forest to where the coconut tree grows. She climbed into the coconut tree and threw down as many coconuts as she could. Then she carried the coconuts home in a basket and set them up on her porch. Then she sat down to wait beside them. In a little while, along came Anansi, and Anansi's eyes lit up when he saw little bush deer's coconuts. Anansi loved coconuts. He loved to eat the tender white coconut meat and drink the sweet coconut milk inside, but he was much too lazy to gather coconuts for himself. Instead, he said, Hello, little bush deer, it's so hot today. Little Bush Deer smiled and said, It is very hot, Anansi. I'm going for a walk in the cool forest. Would you like to come? Yes, I would, smiled Little Bush Deer. So, Anansi and Little Bush Deer went walking, walking, walking into the cool forest. And after a while, Anansi led Little Bush Deer to a certain place. Hey, little bush deer, look over there. Do you see what I see? Little bush deer, though, knew all about Anansi's trick. And she looked and said, No, Anansi, I, I don't see anything. Oh, you must see it. Look very carefully. Little bush deer looked. No. I still don't see anything, she said. Anansi began to get angry. Well, you must see it. Look over here. Look right where I'm pointing. Do you see it now? No, Anansi, said the little bush deer. Anansi stomped his legs. You see it. You just don't want to say it. Say what, said little bush deer. You know, is that what I'm supposed to say? Yes, said Anansi. All right, then I will say it to make you happy. You know, said Little Bush Deer. There, I said it. Are you satisfied? No, Anansi shouted. You're not supposed to say, you know. Well, what am I supposed to say? You're supposed to say, isn't this a strange moss-covered rock? Kapow! Down fell Anansi. Little Bush Deer ran and got all the other animals, and together they went to Anansi's house, and they took back all the good things he had stolen from them. About an hour later, Anansi woke up. His head was spinning. Little Bush Deer was nowhere in sight. And when he got home, he found his house empty, as it was before. 
But if you think Anansi learned his lesson, you are mistaken because he's still playing tricks to this very day. If you like this Anansi story, there are a whole bunch more. You can talk to Mr. Noble about it. Thanks, friends. Bye.